Hey gents, it's Wednesday and I like to take Wednesdays to step back and take a wider look at the industry and this one I've been chewing on for a while, I want to talk about Gustin. Gustin is known to some small group of the internet as this little gem of a brand that delivers high quality goods at low prices. They have a wholesale model which reduces costs to the customer, reduces inventory and waste, all facts. Most of their stuff is made in the USA, except for like their sneakers are made in Italy, but they are a great example of a brand delivering true value. They run on a campaign model, which they have items which need to have so many funders in order to manufacture it, which is a model popularized by Kickstarter, which is also where Gustin got their start. And some of my favorite raw salvage denim in my entire collection is from them. They no longer fit because of a workout thing, but I've ordered shirts and sweaters from them. I've ordered a couple of things that didn't end up getting funded. And their flaws in the model can be seen in my very first video that I did on them, which is when I ordered their peach denim, but they didn't fit when I got them out of the box, which was a cut problem because I know my size. So that video was four years ago and the brand has not evolved from their original business model. And this can be said for a few other brands. So we're giving them our money up front. They go off and manufacture it and then deliver it to you in a few months. And while this does reduce waste and reduces impulses, there is a reason that they haven't grown beyond their little niche. They do deliver great quality clothing in the campaign model, but by doing the campaign model, they're putting all the risk on the customer. They take our money up front and then they go off and manufacture it one to six months. They do give us a lower cost, but then it also really messes up the refund exchange policy. Now for one thing, Gustin doesn't have anything on their website and their FAQ about returns. I myself had to go through an exchange, so what they will normally do is a return for store credit, which then you can buy from their like kind of stock inventory site, and that's what I had to do. And there's mixed reviews online about, you know, sometimes they'll refund you, sometimes they won't. But the fact that there's nothing on their FAQ is concerning to say the least, but they're also in an era where many brands will now send you a product and then also send you a prepaid return label just in case there's a problem. And that's the most customer friendly way. It's obviously not the best for the brand, but if you're trying to build a solid brand, you have to have great customer service. So all that adds up to a somewhat disappointing experience, but most disappointing is that they haven't changed from this original model since they started. They now have several years of data on how many shirts that they've sold, how many pairs of their core denim line that they've sold. So there should, there's no reason that they shouldn't offer a core collection of basics, whether it's t-shirts and a sweater, their white sneakers and some denim. They have enough data to say how much they should keep in inventory, but what it's showing from Gusson is that they don't wanna take the risk of having that sort of model, but that's also the reason they've only continued to attract the same type of customer that's willing to put up with the three to six month wait time, depending on the product that you order with and the kind of customer that only wants to put up for a brand and then wait. And I think what they might be realizing, and I've seen this happen with other young brands as well, is that once you position yourself as a low cost, high quality value provider of goods, then you really struggle when you have to try and reinvest in the brand. And so once you cut out that middleman or you really lower the prices, there isn't enough money left in the business to then reinvest in yourself, whether it's customer service or inventory or basic marketing. I mean, you really don't see Gustin out there much and that's one of the reasons that I covered them four years ago. There's also a discussion out there about Gustin copying products, whether it's a Filson briefcase or you know the Common Projects white sneaker, and I don't give them any trouble for that. That's just the way the fashion industry runs. Everybody copies each other. Now, Gustin, to really make a name for themselves, should innovate on a product and make something that's like, you know, very much their own signature type of product, but you can't really complain there. So at a time when a company like Brave Star is delivering raw selvage denim made in the USA for great prices with a hemming service, I might add, they've proven that the model can be done, but Gustin just hasn't evolved beyond their original premise. At the time, they were at the right place, the right time with the right model to really you know, build themselves up, but they've kind of stayed in this little niche. And I think to have a successful brand, you gotta grow and expand your customer base and Gustin just hasn't done that. Companies like Everlane or Taylor Stitch, Distilled, Buck Mason, they've all proven that you can deliver high quality basics below what the typical like department store prices were. So you're getting higher quality stuff at lower prices. And same thing with White Sneaker. Their White Sneakers were a great deal four years ago, but now you have companies that have come in like Greats or MGMI or some of these other you know, minimalist White Sneakers that are delivering really great stuff at way less than the common projects, but the customer experience is way better because you get free returns and shipping especially when there's size issues because you can't walk into a Gustin store, let alone these other DSC brands. And so that's really what's going on with Gustin. I'd love to see them evolve a little bit. I'd love to know your experience with them, if you've had refunds, returns, exchanges, that sort of thing. But Gustin to me is like 
one of the best examples of a really strong brand that just never crossed the chasm, as they say. And so love to hear your thoughts on Gustin. Let me know if you think I'm on the right path here. And as always, if you wanna learn about the best menswear on the internet, you found the right place. You can always reach out to me over on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Cavalier. Until next time, gents, this is Cavalier.